Y'all seen these people in Manhattan that they pretend to be homeless? Oh, begging for money? They're making a hundred grand a year? Oh, yeah. What? Making a hundred grand a year? That's incredible. incredible. They, they had this Jewish lady was doing it. Oh, Jewish lady was hustling like that and going home to a, a, um, a, a mansion. Yeah. A lot of them, there's hope that they can get out. <laughs> but they'd rather be on the street. People look up like, you know what it is? Because you gotta be clean to get the help. A lot of them rather do drugs than clean themselves up. They could go to the rehab center and live there for free. Because I know people who have been homeless for a hot minute and they get help like that right away in 2.3. Yeah. And that shit got me thinking like, damn, like why is it that right away? Because a lot of them rather drink, rather do drugs, then go to a rehab. And that's true. And some um, some of, some of the people are broken too, though. Yeah, they, so they, they don't they don't want to come back to the society because mental, they, society's messed um, up. They broken. They like I ain't want to deal with this shit no more. It's easier to just do what I want to do float. and not have to deal with none of that. Get high and float. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Some of them homeless people don't even get high. They just fell on bad times. They lost their house, their family to a fire, yeah. whatever it is, and they just can't bounce back to life. But those are the ones that they 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 can go get help. They could. Yeah. Yeah. But you got the ones that. They got the lean. <laughs> yeah, and they don't want to give up the lean. They don't want to give up the lean. Oh, yeah? Yeah, after the earthquake. So, yeah, I found the documentary. It was called, it's called Poverty Inc., and it's on Netflix right now. Poverty Inc. All right, promote, we promote Netflix right here, so they better send the check. I love Netflix. Wink, wink time. Send the check, Netflix. And pretty much the whole premise of the documentary is, um, how modern day poverty is pretty much like an industry in itself. So the whole thing is being supported by the idea of paternalization. And that's pretty much when you have like rich first world countries donate a lot of aid to um, poorer, poorer third, third world countries, right? Mm -hmm. So like usually when a natural disaster happens, you know, people, they want to like try to help out and they send like all this like free stuff to the unfortunate people, right? Yeah, like Red Cross, pretty much like NGOs, right? They would like take donated clothes, donated food, and just a whole bunch of other merchandise, right? And send it to these communities. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, if I'm like a local businessman, right? And like I want people to buy my stuff, but foreigners are giving away my stuff for free, you right. know? How am I going to make money? And, right. how, am I, and, and how is my community going to be self-reliant? You right. know? So then when that aid stops, so like when they stop giving those community products, you know, they don't they don't have a way to like be self sufficient since they've always been since they've always been reliable on like free stuff. Right. You know? So, so you see, so you like, see how the games when they think that you think that they're coming to help other countries think they're like, Oh yes, the United States, thank you, thank you, thank you. But meanwhile like, they're setting them up. Exactly. I think it's more like a short term kind of thing. But what's crazy is back in my country Haiti, right? Um after the earthquake, we had like all these um, NGOs and like contracting businesses and stuff, right? And they were giving money to like the Haitian government to like try to help themselves. But here's the cash. With that money, which is actually a loan, mm -hmm. you could only spend it on like foreign, on like foreign contractors. You know, you can't spend it on like contractors that are like in the country. Local. Exactly. Now, so, now equate that with what Gaddafi was doing, exactly. what Saddam was doing, and all of these people who started to funnel, funnel their, their resources and their money within their own countries. 
<laughs> and that pisses America off. Well, that does piss off. As a matter of fact, I think like, that's how Saudi Arabia became Saudi Arabia because the guy, I forgot who the guy was in respect in the 1950s when they discovered oil in their country. Mm. Right? Instead so of just giving it out to like foreigners, he nationalized it. Yes. And now look at and now now look at Saudi Arabia. You know? And I'm very sure like back then they were like pissed. Now they're just trying to get all goody goody with the uh, Saudis. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So that's like a perpetual cycle of poverty when um, they they know how to fix the issue except they make so much money by not fixing the issue by having like by having poor people you you have like a system where they, they it's perpetual you. you can keep exactly. it going exactly. they need you they're like reliant on your system you don't want them to you don't want them to make it for themselves and thus welfare perpetual welfare exactly well, there's this um they collected I forgot how much money it was to rebuild the homes in um in Haiti after the disaster mm. and they said they built three homes <laughs> oh, you know what else is crazy? Uh, the homes that they built weren't even for like the environment itself. You know, <laughs> Meaning them just will blow down in, 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 in a windstorm, yeah, yeah. Let, let alone a hurricane. Yeah, so it's pretty much sure like the disconnect that you have with the community. I mean, I understand they want to help, right? But it's like, if you want to help someone, it would make sense that you ask that person, what, what, what do you need? You know, <laughs> but if you're giving a guy that can't walk, Right, a pair of like Nike, and he's like, no, I need a wheelchair. I have a season. Fact. Word. When you deal with their politics, because it's their politics, you know it's their politics every time. Uh, politics. You know, right from back when they are democracy, you know it's their policies. It has nothing to do with the national principles that we once had. That's why they're able to do what they're doing, because it's corporate policy. And corporate policy is, is at the, the disposal of the corporation. Right. It ain't dealing. That's why some guys get five years and some guys get 20 years. You're like, wait a minute, they did the same shit. Why did he get the difference in years? Because it's how they just feel like that. Well, you know, I kind of like the way he looks. That's some of the shit that happens. Sometimes I look in court for the same shit, same ticket. One guy dismissed it, the other guy said, well, you know, I'll take a little off. How the last guy dismissed it, but in the same ticket. <laughs> so you know they're not dealing in no type of actual law. Even though they're saying it's law, because law is specific. So once they start talking that shit, you know something's up. So again, what we have to do is we have to start analyzing all of the terms, misnomers that they call us. Yep. Because you just said black, you said brown, right? That's a color. Absolutely. A color is an adjective. If you learn that in school, colors are adjectives. They describe something, but they tell you how you look, but it doesn't tell you who you are. It's descriptive, it's a modifier. So if we keep referring, identifying ourselves as that, shit, you're, you're a dark fellow, but you're not black. This is black, right? Every scholar knows what black really means. Black is a Middle English word, right? And if you go look it up, 1100 AD to 1500 AD, and it means pale, to brighten, to bleach. That's its original meaning. Every scholar knows this. They, they, they won't even debate you. I would, uh, you talk to a PhD or something, they ain't even, even got to worry about that debate. They'll know what you're talking about. As soon as they hear you say that shit, they be like, oh. You yeah, know what I mean? Right. So that shows you the difference in how people are getting educated. Once you get to that certain level, you ain't even got to talk. They don't even know what you're talking about. They can tell <clears> by what you're saying. They, they know you don't know what you're talking about. Because if you keep saying black people this and brown people that, what well, that shit got to do? Your people want to What sense does it make for people to be walking around and look like you and I, look like him to call themselves black? You would not give yourself no name like that. You would try to give yourself a little better name than that. You know what I mean? You would you, hope you, so. You would just apply your shit to that. You know what I mean? You would want to just say the black guy. You'd probably say some shit like the light people, the, you know, the, 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 the light, the light heroes, or something better than the black. Or something like that. But, you know, like, you know, you know. But I mean, something that has to do with bravery or strength, something that makes more sense than just black. Because you wouldn't call yourself that. <laughs> like, no, you know, like, you know. You call yourself some shit that's odd, that you know you're dark. What is it? That don't even make sense. Word, right? like, oh, the black guy. <laughs> yeah, we all. But how did that sound that we all look like this and we walking around calling each other, oh, the black guy? Like, but, like, but, but, but this how crazy that we're going to change if you're like, oh, the white skin cat, or the brown skin cat. I mean, I really like to say that. 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 Oh, two continents? Nice. Yes. African-American, I'm like, I don't first I can't even make up my mind. First of all, I'm like, <laughs> but don't take any of that. Why take any of that? You know, see, that that's kind of like with the Hispanic thing, because Hispanics come in every single color. There's like dark as Hispanics, there's like... But then what is a Hispanic? Exactly, that's what I'm saying. What the hell is What is a Hispanic? I just straight up Latino. That's nothing and either. The thing is, Haiti and Jamaica are in the same area, but they're not considered Hispanic. Right. They're not. But they're considered yeah. more of the African diaspora. Yeah. But just the same way they got but in Cuba, same thing. But they're called Afro-Cubans. They just speak Spanish. They still speak Spanish. 
You know what I mean? What, the biggest factor of anything that we gotta remember is that we have the right to our own self determination. Right. So every time somebody else near you, they can't do that. We can't go. You allow them to. They can. Yeah, we, I mean, <laughs> if we acquiesce and say, oh yeah, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're the brown people. Then yeah, what are they supposed to do? We agree to it. But we have the right to our own self determination. Same thing with Latin, though. Lat Latino? That's, Latin is a language. Yeah. That's not people. That's a language. You have to understand yeah, the terms like, that you, you don't know that, though. Off the street, right? I don't I don't know what your ethnicity is. I don't, I don't just know. Just by looking at you. Yeah, right. you know, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, right. like you know, that's why, I, that's why I prefer people just call me black, just because, like, me, I'm like, I come from Haitian descent. So, like, so like, that's why it pissed me off when, when people say, like, African American. Because I'm like, I know what you're trying to say, but, you know, not not every single black person that, like, lives in America has that same history, you know? Now, let me, let me show you the spell, right? I know people that don't believe true. in spells and magic. I just told you what black meant, right? Black means pale, bleached, brightened. It's a Middle English word. That ain't got nothing to do with it. And you ain't nowhere near bleached and brightened, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely has changed. But that was what's known as connotative connotative language. language. Like how we like how we like yo, that's bad. Like that doesn't it's not mean in the same yeah. way. But it's you know what it, you know what it means. You know what it means. The original definition is always the definition. That's the denotated definition. The other stuff is what we will be like you said. It's an assumed language. But if you go, this is how you know a word. What what etymology? How it sticks to it? You get a law dictionary, right? Have you ever read a law dictionary? It's so crazy that if you look at the law dictionary, the etymology, the origin, the original definition is usually what that word is mm -hmm. in a law dictionary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Almost. Oh, but Almost. guess what? The, it, it's different because it goes straight back to the etymology. Yep. Like guess what? Treasure uh um thesaurus, right? We we assume thesaurus is a dictionary that has to do with synonyms, right? Look it up, get the synonyms, the antonyms, and all this other stuff. Thesaurus in, music, in a in a law dictionary goes back to etymology, which means treasury. Right? So I see how see how they're dealing. So when they're teaching us, their 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 skill is teaching us or misteaching us because they don't give us etymology. You know what etymology is, and you're very intelligent. I hear by the way you talk that you're learning. And somebody like you don't know etymology. I didn't know what etymology was until I was thirty. I'm thirty-two, right? And etymology is one of the bases that all scholars, all the Oxford, so far Oxford, all the Rhodes scholars, Harvard, Yale, all these people. Cornell West, all of them know this stuff. Right. Right? right, and to show you how they do, they won't tell you that. But they're telling us we're being miseducated. But you know about etymology, and you never told the kids that. In exactly. School? If you got a PhD, you know what etymology is. Every, and, and talk to a PhD and just say, "Hey, what's etymology?" Somebody talk, and watch all of a sudden he knows what it is. But he ain't never taught you that in none first, of the English classes. First, first of all, look at how he opened his eyes when you asked him that question. Yeah, he's gonna be like, "Oh <laughs> shit, are you, who told you that?" You know what I mean? And it puts you on a totally different standard of when you talk to people if you know etymology. You can talk to a PhD, you can talk to a Rhodes Scholar, and you won't look stupid. Because you're dealing on basic fundamentals and principles that don't change. Right. When you learn how to cook, you learn knife skills. When you learn how to play basketball, you learn how to keep your arms tucked. If universally, that works with everybody. There's universal things that you do on any philosophy, any any practice of what you do that works. And if you're not taught that shit... It's called a formula. Yeah, you're, not, you're, out, of, you're out of the loop. Oh, and the, no. fact, the fact that we do so well without any of that... It's phenomenal. That, but that tells you who we are. The fact that, the <laughs> and that fact tells that, you that they know who we are. The fact that people of Moorish ancestry, African ancestry, do so great without that information, those basic principles and guidelines, it's phenomenal. It's, it's out of this world because we're totally, we don't have, we don't have the information and we still got all these other type of things that we do great. So that shows you that with those basics, it'd be out of this, it, 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 it would change the whole Knock it out of the park. Yeah. It would be crazy. It would be it would be something that they couldn't even control, which we've done already. Yeah. There's been times in our periods of histories where the African peoples, or whatever we were calling ourselves at the time, Egyptians, or the Kometans, or the Tamar Tamarians, were doing things that were out of this world, which they left a record of. You see it all over the planet. They got all type of buildings, huge megalithic structures that you go, how did they do that? It looked like they need, they used diamond, diamond tools and lasers to do this, but... But they tell us that they did it with... But it was Stone people, what, 20,000, 50,000 years ago that was doing this? All over South America, Africa, all over the planet. They got things that you're like, how did they do this? Who's doing this? With, with, with primitive tools. Right, telling you that they were primitive tools when actually out. But they probably had a high, high culture. You know, all of that is used to make you think that, you know, we was just in caves running around like this. You know what I mean? But, watch this. Here's the contradictory, but we got to change our, our concept. They'll say we're the mothers and fathers of civilization. They said it all the time. They have no problem saying that, right? 
if that's the case, then how can we not teach everybody? Word. How can we not it's teach like they everybody? contradict themselves. If you're saying that we're the mothers and fathers of civilization, how could you do something? Well, if you did do something, at the very least, it's an add-on to what we showed you. Or I'll do you one better. How could you call us the mother and father of civilization? I'm sorry. And just like that. you treat us with such disdain as the mother and fathers of civilization. Mm -hmm. So what is that saying about how you think of yourself? Because if you're going to treat the people who you wouldn't even be here without, then what are you really saying about yourself? Mm -hmm. And then you wonder why women need rights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then you wonder why all of these things, because they've never treated anybody properly. Not even themselves. The, the, the easiest way that I was told to stop abuse is don't participate in it. You want to get stopped being abused some type of way, don't participate in it anymore. For us, we're not willing to suffer enough to where we just won't participate in this in this structure no more, in this in this society, which is corrupt. It's admitted to be corrupt. It's admitted by the official, by everybody admits that it's corrupt, but we still every day function in it and keep going through the abuse. People, you know how easy it would be to get cops to stop shooting people? You know how easy it is? Don't buy no cars. Tell GMC, tell mm. Chevy, tell everybody. <laughs> We're not buying no more cars, so y'all take care of us. We're not buying no new cars. Yeah, like the, like the cars. Um, boycott, the, the, or, or, the bus boycott. Or, 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 buy, or buy just some used shit just to get you. Don't buy no new cars for six months, and they'll stop trusting you. They'll lobby to their, oh, no, y'all got to stop doing this. Yep. And that's just black. That's with no nationality or nothing. You'll get them to stop. But you think people going to do that? Uh. You know how quick it is to get Jordan and cut his sneaker prices in half? Don't buy no sneakers for six months and see his shit cut, go right in half. Absolutely. Go right. He cut it right in half because... He can't survive without you. It's always a relationship between, so even if it's a master-slave relationship, you have to agree to do it. You know, you could just let them kill you. Who said I don't you think got people, people are desperate. They don't, they don't see it like that. They kind of see like, hey, I have to survive well, until people, tomorrow. People are, to see people are always in, you know in what survival I mean? mode. They survival. always look at like short-term gains. You know what I mean? Survival. Well, that's because of the way they train. They're indoctrinated yeah, yeah. into the system. They're indoctrinated into the system. Hard body. But... We got to stop, you know, you got brothers and sisters that come to you and tell you this, right? And they have no reason. They have, you know, we don't have nothing to gain from saying what we're saying. We lose by saying this. You know, you should take, at least go look at what they're saying. Not saying you, because you're the type of person who's going to look yeah, it up. Yeah, if you hear something, it, it yeah, seems like you're going to check that out. How many people that you probably told something that was pertinent, mm -hmm. and they just laughed at you? They just go, oh, all right, these fucking guy with the glasses is talking some shit again. You know what I mean? You had good information you were selling them. You were really trying to help. Yeah. And then five years, if you see them, they'd be like, yo. You know you, you was right about me, that? Man. <laughs> yo, man, I should have did that shit. And, and, it's, and it's a problem that we don't trust each other. And I understand why. It has to come to where, you know, we know how to clarify the information and get to a point that we're not guessing anymore. Facts. You know, because we do a lot of guessing and believing. A lot of believing is done in our culture. It's See. something that we didn't do. We built the science rules and high principles. I say it all the time, man. Oh, in, in a world full of smartphones, we got stupid people. Mm -hmm. not... I think it's like there's no reward for the for like pursuing information. You know, think about it. Think about like your average layman, right? Mm -hmm. He is content of being where he is as long as he's fed, as long as he's entertained, as long as he's distracted. What is that, though? You know what that is? That's a uh, like a beast mentality, and this is what Jewish people call goyim. You're worthless cattle. You you only you have no direction in past five minutes of think of thought. You understand? But you'd be surprised how many people are like stuck in that. Oh, I'm not surprised. I, I see it all day. If you just walk the street and observe people driving, walking, and just see the things that they do naturally, you'll be like, yo, what what are they thinking about? Listen, I'm coming here. Light is green. This lady decides to cross the street in the middle of the street with traffic flowing both ways. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, yo, is she serious? It's a hard attack.